Hi and welcome to this session on YouTube for you, um, my chess channel for you. So here we go, um, what am I going to do today? Here of course is the great Magnus Carlsen um, playing black versus uh, Ali Weiser um, with the white pieces that I've brought this game to you. But this game I bring you today is a bit f um, fantastic really. Um, it's a bit sort of like swashbuckling, piratey kind of young boy who's only 13, beats a 33 year old grandmaster for, who was born in Moscow on 21st of May 1986. 33 year old grandmaster from there. Um, so he's rated this grandmaster black is rated 2700 against um, this young chap 13 now 14 born in 2006 um, at Israel and he plays white against the strong grandmaster who is 80th or so in the world for chess players so he is um, white and his opponent plays the Sicilian dragon Okay, so his opponent plays, black plays, the Sicilian Dragon. So here we go with this game. Now this game was headed up on YouTube as um, Kid or Kitty Beats 2700 um, rated player, Grandmaster rated player. So everyone that's 2700 is of course... Um, uh, is of course in that realm of um, grandmaster in the world as these two are here so here we go this is the game that I bring you today and it attracted my attention of course because it was stating something about a queen sacrifice um, so here we go when I do a queen sacrifice I actually just like, like go crunch queen takes pawn and uh, it forces pawn takes queen, so that's why I call it queen sacrifice. So uh, a variant on on the um, way that people say that. So white is here. White is Benny. I will attempt this. Please pardon me if I haven't pronounced this. White from Israel. Benny um, Eisenberg. Eisenberg or Eisenberg. And um, black is Grandmaster Gadir Gusanov. Um, okay, so, and he's from that part of the world that I don't know how to pronounce properly yet. But no doubt, one day someone will teach me. Here we go off this great game. So have a look at this for your entertainment today. To swindle is fun, to be swindled isn't. Everyone loves a good swindle in chess except for those that the person that's been swindled even the arbiters like swindles unless they've been swindled so here we have the um the uh the sicilian dragon set up um black can also just play d6 etc instead of g6 so this would probably be more in the more recent book of mine which is not my book but from Levy um, this would probably be in this book more likely than the other book because the normal play would be d6 usually or knight f6 and d6 etc so here white plays bishop e3 knight f6 knight c3 bishop g7 bishop c4 now white can actually be met with this move here i think that's correct so white can actually be met with this move here because if the queen takes the knight then um uh, if the queen takes the knight then black merely just takes the knight back here and etc and if knight c6 then knight e3 in between knight takes bishop and then knight takes queen 
Someone's trying to ring me, but I can't answer it. I will have a look quickly. So anyway, this is this move, okay? So here we go with the main line, which is castling and bishop b3. And d6, here comes a major setup for black. It has very, very good um, for chess, but um, as I mentioned earlier, white is doing quite well in the dragon, according to my research. So here's f3. Now f3 prevents the knight g4 and hitting this black squared bishop. Bishop d7 and we've got queen d2, a typical classical setup for white here. And here's knight d4, so rather than um, play queen d4, uh, white captured correctly with bishop d4 in my opinion. So here comes what happened now, um, was it b5? Yes, b5. And now white starts their um, pawn assault with h4. And here is a5, so black's equal to the task. And um, was it g4 now? Oh, knight d5, that's correct. Um, knight d5, and then we have knight d5, and we have the wee little sneaky move, bishop takes g7. The Sicilian dragon bishop is now um, off the off the chessboard, and after king g7, better that than any other variations. Uh, we have bishop d5. Now this bishop is um, possibly in a wee bit of danger. This white square bishop, so um, it has to be careful for having squares for itself soon here with. So here's rook c8, of course, because the, the bishop's been attacked. And here we have g uh, h5. And black would not do well to take this pawn. It might look that black could take this pawn, but white would just merely um, probably take with the rook and then threaten queen h6 check and mate um, and other things too. So. So this wall of um, the Sicilian dragon, which is probably from China, is in danger of um, in danger of being broken into the king side position for black. So it's very vulnerable. But um, after this move, black just plays queen uh, rook h8, which is a move incidentally I thought of for black. Um, so that, because otherwise, white is just threatening pawn takes pawn, and queen check, and etc. So that's quite fun. So just pawn takes pawn, and then um, queen h6 check. And the only thing that black's got is merely a king to f6 to get out of checkmate. So here's rook h8, and here's g4 I believe, oh castling. Castling now, and I think Queen C B6, not C7, B6, and what should White do now? Should White play Queen here, check, or something like that? White did actually play G4, and here we have um, a move that um, is a wee bit surprising, really. Um, it's just merely e6 and now the bishop as previously mentioned is under some um, stress and duress because now we are um, having difficulty with where to put the bishop because wherever it goes according to um, the Grand Master or so um, wherever it goes it's going to be lost because after this is a4 even though black has to um, have these sorts of things in queen d6 so here's h6 check why not it's a check and then king 
if I and believe it or not I actually thought when I was watching the video why not Queen C3 and that looked very good for white but I miss Rook takes Queen so I won't go on about that so here's H6 King F8 now um, his opponent now Benny now played the surprising move sort of Bishop B7 well done if you saw this move but um, they reckon that um, I will just add a kibitza real quickly and I will just say what is happening here um, according to the experts um, black has a one position okay so I'll just turn that engine off and go back to the drawing board so we have queen b7 of course now queen d6 happens and to preserve, preserve the um, the bishop advantage black plays king e8 only move other than other moves but so just king e8 to to hang on to the bishop that they've just won so this is the one position for black according to um, Fritz or whatever and also experts that were annotating or watching this game so what happens next um, was it queen e5 or oh, queen d4 and um, that stays on the um, bishop of course on the um, it stays hitting the bishop on d7 of course now comes um, rook g8 Now white plays um, a move that I would call preventative here and plays a rook d2. And here black I believe plays um, queen c6, oh rook c7. So what did white now play? What's a, a, what I would call a sort of a sensible move to play in rapid chess? Um, so it's in black's face, put it that way. It's in black's face and it annoys black for the rest of the game. Because what white's done is they've played rook d2 <coughs> and this stops all these queen c2 checkmate threats as I've been trying to show you already. So what did white play? Well done of course. You can all see it. Everyone can see this move. Um, I can see it, so, so can everyone else is queen to g7 now of course the rook cannot capture because then white merely wins a rook for his pawn because after rook g7 okay new variation we will just say this is uh, this is not preventable even if white wants to get threatened with checkmate on c2 it's no threat so this is just going to threaten um, pawn to g8, making it into a queen, and black looks on helplessly. So the grand master um, upon queen g7 um, did not take much time, played rook f8, and then quickly came queen h7. And by the way, playing a young fellow like this, um, they move around in their seat a lot because they're trying to get the body language probably because otherwise they're still like down here and the grandmaster's up there and that body language isn't healthy so here we go queen h7 now so what does black do now black plays do does black play because um, black takes quite a long time here on this move and I think it's queen c8 oh king e7 because now black wants to get on the back rank you see so what does white do moves their queen just sideways side cushion queen g7 now this is just threatening this pawn mount okay so here comes queen c8 to prevent um, to be able to block 
h8 now it's very embarrassing for black because white has a very strong move that's a real powerhouse move and i'm actually thinking there's another move here too but um black is met with a very strong um bottling move really it's a real rock solid move because we don't have to watch out for rook c2 so what black meets now is the very strong move g5 now this is horrible i consider that um white has completely um outplayed black black has now got a completely lost game because all that black is threatened with is h7 and upon h7 the rook cannot go to protect the h8 square because the queen just comes here and checks and takes the rook with check and queen takes and then and then queens the pawn so g5 i consider is lost already but the grandmaster still played a move here um played uh rook h8 and so that is very very embarrassing because after queen f6 um white was met with resignation from this very strong grandmaster who incidentally i have watched a few games and i can say a very very good player so if you want to watch that actual game that is on the internet under the rapid chess um rapid chess channel on youtube thank you very much <coughs> excuse my frog in my throat there's no frog i haven't got the coronavirus and i hope everyone um i hope we find a cure for it if there's not already one found for it already thank you very much for watching today all the best with your chest no matter where you are with your chest and wherever you are in the world thank you